بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله we praise Allah Azza wa Jal for this blessed month of Ramadan it's hard to believe that it's over just a few moments left the only two prayers left dhuhr and asr prayer maghrib will not be in Ramadan may Allah accept all of our deeds and our worship. In a few moments we'll be implementing the verse of the Quran that Mufti Niyaz spoke about yesterday. وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ We will be completing the term of Ramadan as Allah wills and decrees and we will be proclaiming the greatness of Allah by saying Allahu Akbar on the day of Eid. وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that we may be grateful. So the ending of Ramadan and the gift of Ramadan at the end is this idea of shukr, gratitude. And that's what um, Tanwir was speaking about as well. I wanted to explore this idea because this is the most important thing to understand as believers. We have a way of beginning things and we have a way of ending things. The way of ending things for us is with shukr. Every single thing we learn in our religion, the ending has to be with shukr. That's why in the verses of the Quran that speak about Ramadan, the first verse of Ramadan ends with la'allakum tattaqoon, so that you may attain taqwa. The beginning of Ramadan is with taqwa. The beginning of everything in our life is with taqwa. How do we remind ourselves of taqwa? We say bismillahir rahmanir rahim. That's why we say that, reminding ourselves everything that we do when we eat, when we pray. But the ending of everything has to be with shukr. That's why when Allah speaks about Eid in the verses, He ends, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So Ramadan is between لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ and لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And our whole life has to be between those two. So the endings have to be with shukr. And that's why in the dua, Allah says about the greetings of the people of paradise, and Shaykh Fuad always mentions that in his dua, وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ the last of what they say in paradise, their endings will always be with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So tying this to Asbab al-Nuzul, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he used to consult some of the senior companions in his time. He would always have with him a young companion who was none other than Abdullah ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas was about 16 when the Prophet passed away, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So in the reign of Umar, he must have been you know, 19, 20 or so. So he would always keep him by his side, he would consult him, and some of the senior companions began to feel resentments. So they said to Omar, some of them were so senior that they had witnessed the Battle of Badr. So they said to Omar one day, they said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Lima tadkhulu hadha ma'ana walana abna'un mithlahu. Why do you always have him with us, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen? When we have children just like him, the same age as him. So Umar ibn al-Khattab to teach them a lesson, he said, he didn't answer the question, he said, I will postpone the answer. And then the next time, he gathered them and he said, مَاذَا تَقُولْ فِي قَوْلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ He recited to them a surah and he said, what do you think about this surah? And the surah he recited, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا He recited the surah which means when comes to you the help of Allah and the final victory and you see people entering into Islam in large numbers in the end Allah says فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا so glorify the praises of your Lord and seek His forgiveness because He is ever acceptance of repentance. So Umar ibn Khattab after reciting that verse, he asked these individuals, he said, Mada taqul fi hadha? What do you say about this surah? What does it mean? He asked them the meaning. And they all gave various answers. Most of them said it means whenever we experience victory, Whenever Allah helps us, we need to be more grateful. We need to have this 
this uh, feeling of gratitude, of shukr, and we, we need to praise Allah and glorify Him. And then he turned to Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas was by his side, he said, what do you say about this? Do you agree with them? And he said, la. He said, no. He said, what do you say about this surah? And Ibn Abbas, he said, هَذَا أَجَلُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَعْلَمَهُ لَهُ He said, this verse, this surah means that the life of the Prophet وسلم, was coming to an end and Allah was informing him. And this really was just an information from Allah. So, what was he saying? He was telling us the deeper meanings of the surah. And Omar, he turned around and he said, I don't know any other meaning than this. I agree with him. So the companions, they knew the real meanings of the surah. They knew the apparent meanings. These people weren't wrong. Yes, Allah is saying, apparently, and it's correct. When you experience victory, when you experience help, you need to be grateful. But the real meaning was this verse was revealed, this surah was revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, informing him that his mission is coming to an end. And informing him that when you see these signs, then you need to increase in your gratitude. So the companions, they understood well. Shukr is associated with the ending of things. And in this case, the end of the Prophet's mission, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So let's look at the structure of shukr in a practical way. What does shukr look like? What is shukr? The most simple way is tahmid in Arabic. Tahmid is saying alhamdulillah. Praise belongs to Allah azza wa jal. So the most simple expression of shukr is alhamdulillah. It's a very powerful expression. It's something Allah teaches us. In fact, verse number one of the Quran is what? The verse number one of the entire Quran, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. So hamd or tahmid means you praise Allah for the blessings and for what He does for us, for the blessings that He showers upon us. So tahmid is always linked to the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's why we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise belongs to Allah because He's the sustainer of the entire universe. We say the Quran is filled with this. Alhamdulillahi Lathi Khalaqa Samawati Wal Arub Wa Ja'ala Dhulumati Wal Nur. We praise Allah who created the heavens and the earth and He placed light and dark, uh, darkness and light therein. We say Alhamdulillah. الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ الْكِتَابِ وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجًا Praise belongs to Allah who revealed to His servant the book that contains no crookedness. We say, Alhamdulillahi الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ We praise Allah for guiding us to this deen and we would never be guided without His way. So Alhamdulillahi is always linked to the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's something that our life needs to be filled with. This is how we express gratitude in the simplest way, saying Alhamdulillah. We should frequent our tongues with the, with, the, with the praise of Allah in this way, by thanking Him for the favors that we enjoy. The favors we enjoy are so numerous, we cannot count them. We can never even uh, praise Him enough or thank Him enough for that. But we try as best as we can and we say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Now this is the first level of shukr, tahmid, very, very important. Now if you want to take your shukr to the next level, there's a more powerful way, which is you take the tahmid, and before that you add tasbih. Tasbih is saying subhanallah. Tasbih is the glorification of Allah. What's the difference between tasbih and tahmid? Tasbih is where you praise Allah, for the intrinsic qualities that he enjoys. And tahmid is where you praise him and thank him for his favors upon us. So when you say subhanallah, you are making Allah perfect and you're declaring his perfection from all the defects and imperfections we find around us. So Allah says subhanallah amma yushrikun. Subhanallah glorified is Allah over what they associate partners with him. Subhanallah wa ta'ala amma yasifun. Allah is exalted above what they describe. وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا They say Allah has a son. Allah then answers, Subhanahu. Glory be to Him. He can never have a son. So SubhanAllah is praising Allah for His intrinsic perfections. He is perfect. That's why you say SubhanAllah. 
and alhamdulillah you thank him and you 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 praise him in a way for the favors that we enjoy what's the relationship subhanallah allah is perfect and complete and tahmid alhamdulillah allah makes others more perfect and complete so this combination is very very powerful that's why the last hadith in sahih al bukhari the most authentic book of hadith the final hadith when you look at the first hadith and the last hadith the way any book begins and the way it ends is very significant and it contains powerful lessons the last hadith in sahih al bukhari is a famous hadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said kalimatan there are two words khafifatan ala al lisan thaqilatan fi al mizan habibatan ila ar rahman two words that are so light on the tongue so beloved to ar rahman and so heavy on the scales what are those words subhanallah wa bihamdihi tasbih and tahmid and the second subhanallah al azim so tasbih and tahmid when you add them together they increase the power of that expression and that's a much more powerful way of expressing shukr so this is very very important there's another hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that says man qala subhanallah wa bihamdihi fil yawm 100 marra hutta anhu khata'ayahu walaw kana mithla zabad al bahr whoever says a hundred times in a day subhanallah wa bihamdihi all his sins or her sins are wiped out even if they're like the foam of the sea so this is the power of tasbih and tahmid and finally there's a third level here of shukr so the first level alhamdulillah tahmid the second level add, adding more power to that expression tasbih plus tahmid and now the third level you take tasbih plus tahmid and you add to it istighfar istighfar where you say astaghfirullah alazim wallahi seek your forgiveness so this is much more powerful it's a powerful form of sh- expressing shukr to allah azza wa jal and that is how do you remember that in surah an-nasr that we recited fa sabbih bihamdi rabbika wa astaghfir glorify the, the, the praises of your lord and seek his istighfar or seek his forgiveness in in essence what allah is saying when you have this victory allah is reminding the prophet towards the end of his mission tasbih tahmid and istighfar and what is the connection here the connection here is that tasbih allah is perfect allah is complete tahmid allah makes others more perfect and others more complete and istighfar we are acknowledging our own imperfections and we seek allah's forgiveness that's the perfect way to combine all three that's how you understand that connection so you can praise allah for his intrinsic perfection and then you praise him and thank him for you know some of that perfection that we enjoy it's not perfection but we, he makes us more complete he gives us his favors and finally istighfar is you acknowledge your own imperfections you acknowledge your own imperfections so this is very very powerful and this is what we do at the end of all of our tasks In fact in salah what do we do at the end of salah there's a powerful hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that teaches about the adhkar we all do the adhkar at the end of the prayer perhaps we don't know the history behind it some of the companions came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and they said dhahaba ahla duthuri bil ujur they complained to the prophet that look the people of wealth they've gotten all the reward and he said kayfa that what do you mean the prophet asked them what are you talking about So they said they explained look sallu kama sallaina they pray and we pray wa jahadu kama jahadna they engage in jihad they they engage in the the, the struggle wa and we do the same wa anfaqu min fuduli amwalihim wa laysat lana amwalun but they do something we don't do they spend in the way of allah because they have money but we don't have that money so we can't cash them in that regard so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he knew that you know everyone has stations and allah blesses some people more than others but he still needed to give them an avenue to catch up so he said ala ukhbirukum afala ukhbirukum bi amrin tudrikuna man kana qablakum wa tasbiquna man kana ba'dakum wa la ya'ti ahadun bi mithli ma ji'tum bihi illa man ja'a bi mithlihi He said, "Shall I tell you something? 
if you do it, you will catch up to them and no one will catch up to you except if they start doing the same thing. So what did he say to them? He said, تُسَبِّحُونَ فِي دُبُرِ كُلِّ صَلَاةٍ عَشْرًا وَتَحْمِدُونَ عَشْرًا وَتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَشْرًا He said, at the end of every one of your prayers, say, subhanAllah, ten times. And another version of the hadith, thirty-three times, that you might be more familiar with. But this is in Sahih al-Bukhari as well. Say, subhanAllah, at the end of your prayers, ten times. And then say, alhamdulillah, ten times. And then you say, Allahu Akbar, ten times. So what is that connect? This is the exact same thing. This is فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ So why do we say SubhanAllah at the end of the prayer? Imagine at the end of your prayer, it makes perfect sense. At the end of your prayer you say As-salamu alaykum, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. You just finish praying. And then imagine the first thing you say, Alhamdulillah, I just prayed. You're kind of praising yourself because you just did something, right? And you're proud, Alhamdulillah. But first you say SubhanAllah. Allah never needed your prayer. That's the sense here. That's why we begin with SubhanAllah. Allah is perfect. He got nothing from our prayers, from our worship. He wants us to worship. But that's why you begin with SubhanAllah. And then you say Alhamdulillah. You know, Allah gave you the tawfiq to worship Him. That's a great blessing. And then at the end you say Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar means Allah is greater than your imperfection. So it's very similar to istighfar. But it's a different angle. So it's actually the same thing. So this is the most complete expression of shukr that we find in our deen. Our whole deen, our whole lives have to be tasbih, tahmeed, and istighfar. That connection has to be there. That order has to be there. Everything that we end with has to be like that. Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked the Prophet ﷺ, she said, I see you all the time saying, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, astaghfirullah al-azim. I've noticed that you started saying this a lot. She said that to him. And he said, Ya Aisha, he explained, he said, uh, my Lord informed me that there's a sign in my ummah. When I see that sign, this is what I need to do. And he recited Surah An-Nasr, Ida Ja'a Nasrullahi Wal Fath. So he said, I saw this sign after Fathur Makkah. So now he started saying Tasbih, Tahmeed, and Istighfar in his lifetime. So we need to end our lives, end our projects, end our month of Ramadan, and everything that we do with the state of shukr. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That's a great lesson for us as believers. And specifically, if you want to break down what shukr is, it's tasbih, tahmeed, and istighfar. May Allah give us a tawfiq to end this month of Ramadan strong. May Allah accept all of our prayers. May Allah reward everyone who attended here. May Allah reward our imams. Bashri Shaykh Fuad came here every single day. May Allah reward him immensely. May Allah accept everything from us and may Allah continue to give us tawfiq to worship in the next, last few moments. May Allah give us all a wonderful day of Eid. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.